everyone and welcome to Rift News, the show that serves you walls of text so you don't have to read anything. Since there was an enormous amount of content during December, I didn't have the time to go through the news. And since it all piled up, I'll have to split it into two parts. So today we're gonna have a look at 5 Nexus posts from the last 3 weeks. And because that's quite a lot to cover, let's get right on it. Let's start with one of the Ask Riot posts, by Riot Lambs, Katie Chaos and Tiger Lily. How do you decide what dance a champion has? Here Riot Lambs describes the process. Emotes such as jokes, taunts and dances are picked towards the end of development. During this time the entire team has a chance to chip in their ideas, but it is the animators that make the final call. As for the ideas, here are the basic questions the team needs to ask themselves. What's the size, shape and silhouette of the character? Is the character's tone more humorous or serious? Dances can sometimes be a moment to break a character, similar to the joke animations, so it can be fun to test something a little bit different. Does the character's design immediately pop out as something similar to what we reference in pop culture? Warwick and the thriller Werewolf Dance were a great match. On top of these basic guidelines, they are also trying to bring in a unique dance with every champion. How do you go about collecting and solving bugs? KT Chaos mentioned here that there are multiple ways of getting bug reports. There is a form in the game client, official boards with report a bug topic, Reddit, Twitter, and even co-workers ping them, and I quote, saying we broke our shit, or even worse, that we broke their shit. From there they look into their database, there they look for what the issue is, how they can reproduce the bug, and possibly for any pictures or videos showing them what's happening. After finding out the bugs, they need to prioritize those that break the game entirely. After that, they move on to the minor bugs. Then it is up to the QA analyst to check out if the fix works. If not, it is sent back for a second look. Some bugs may take minutes to figure out, and some take hours. How does it feel to be swallowed by Tom Kench? Is it warm, cold, wet or sticky? Asking for a friend. I don't even feel worthy reading the answer. It's like reading the experience of someone being on a trip. It's better if you actually read it for yourselves. But let's just say that all nightmares begin with a beautiful dream. Later we got a detailed dev post focused on the dragon we saw during the worlds this year. Starting in February Riot slowly pieced together the opening ceremony. It featured an authentic Chinese Aru player, pecking Oprah masks modeled as League Champions, an appearance by superstar Jay Cho, and a live performance of Legends Never Die by Against the Current. But Riot felt like the opening was missing a twist that would match the size of the Beijing iconic Bird's Nest Stadium. They brainstormed a couple of ideas and eventually landed on using augmented reality. Augmented reality, or AR, is created by having a real-life camera control a virtual camera within a render engine, simultaneously merging the two images to give the appearance of the Unreal made real. AR isn't new to sports broadcasting. Forms of AR have been used in traditional sports and in other esports events such as the Dota's International. But Riot wanted to try creating something at the scale beyond anything they had attempted before. The first ideas were to have Rise shoot magic around the stadium, and Ash firing arrows out of the projection screen. But they also had this long running joke for years, let's just have a dragon perch on the stage. Back then the technology to pull this off was out of reach. Either the quality was really low or it wasn't affordable. But 2017 pushed AR technology forward. So they formed a team of some of their craziest technology innovators to try and answer the question of can we make a dragon. Of course, there were some initial challenges. How do we get a dragon to fly into the stadium and land on the edge of the bird's nest? How will the dragon cast realistic shadows not just onto the floor but onto the actual walls of the stadium itself? Will we be able to adjust the lighting the day of show in order to match the weather outside? How? How do we time its entrance perfectly with the live performance? So the entire process began with the creation of the dragon. They couldn't simply import the in-game model since the quality would be too low and it would appear blurry. So they began with concepts for the pose, the head, limbs, wings and the body. And after the concept was complete, they had to make the model. Here the problem was its quality. 
the model would have to render in real time, so they had to give it the illusion of high quality, while keeping it near the low end. The dragon you saw wasn't just a transparent video played on top of the footage. It was an actual dragon model that reacted to the camera placement. So if you ran around with the camera, the model would rotate to appear real. After the model was ready, they tested few concepts to see what would work. One of the ideas was to make the dragon bring in the summoner's cup. But that idea was scrapped since they wanted to use a 16 meter inflatable trophy. Once their plan was ready, they had to test the rendering on their parking lot to make sure they hit their marks. They had to guarantee 60 FPS, ensure the dragon can cast soft shadows, create 3D masking so the dragon can appear behind the stadium as well, ensure they can adjust the lighting at any time, ensure they can color correct to match the other cameras, make sure they can use two separate cameras with two real-time render engines, make sure they can line up the animations with the music, and make sure the camera operator can always focus on the dragon. So here's the final shot comparison between the preview and the final scene. After that we got another artsy nexus post. This one is about Riot statues. We all know the Annie, Lucian, Trindamir and Rai statues. But 2016 was Riot's 10th anniversary. So they began working on a new piece. They started exploring with a few rounds of concept art. Exploring where they could put the statue and what the experience would be like. What feeling should the statue evoke. One of their concepts was Garen vs Darius. This was based on their teaser video, but later they changed the classic 1v1 into a trio of champions fighting. They used miniatures to figure out the design of the statue, and during that process they realized that capturing a conflict of three sides is much harder. Usually a duel has a clear vocal point, but here they had to capture three different fighting styles. So in order to keep the balance design, they put the champions in a circle where everyone was equal. And with that idea set, Riot hired the Metal Sculpture Studio to help them pull it off. They used reinforced stainless steel and bronze for the smaller parts. And the entire process took 5 months. But after a lot of dedication, the statue was born and it was placed before the Beijing Stadium. Then we got another Ask Riot. Why do we keep getting different versions of Earth mode instead of the regular Earth? This is a question a lot of players wanted to ask, and surprisingly, the answer actually makes sense. Ever since Earth appeared in League for the first time, people started asking Riot why they don't bring it back more often. There is one reason that they haven't really talked about before now. Earth makes some people stop playing League. Here is what Ghostcrawler and Riot Cactopus said. Every time we ran regular Earth, we'd see a huge spike of games being played. And then the numbers actually dropped back down to a level that's lower than it was just before we ran Earth. It's normal for new players to join League and for some long time players to leave. This happens all the time, but when we turned on regular Earth, it was different. In NA for example, whenever we ran Earth we would usually see over twice as many long time players leave the game compared to what we would normally expect. In other words, some people binged on Earth and then suddenly stopped playing League. And the size of the drop off indicates it's not just the people coming back for Earth and then leaving afterwards. Despite spending a lot of time investigating the reasons, we aren't actually sure whether Earth causes some sort of hangover effect or if it makes regular games feel slow by comparison. Maybe it's because Earth feels like playing League with cheats turned on. Regardless, after we turn on Earth, total games played go down, as do overall game hours. And they don't recover for a long time, if ever. This is interesting. So Earth is actually making people leave. 
So if you ever wonder about the old earth not coming back again, remember that Riot is actually protecting you. If you ask me, I think it's because people realize how much fun earth is. And when it's gone, the normal games just seem too slow and boring. I can't really think of any other reasons. What's the recipe for Paro Cookie? Apparently it is savory blend of free range, grass fed avarosan game hands and organic, non zedemo freliordian herbs containing the essential nutrients necessary to keep your Poro burning with pleasure. Poros prefer their snacks warm, so if you have the Living Forge handy, even better. Warning, bring a handful, because feeding one Poro will lead to a whole fluff of them gathering at your feet. And the last question, why do you commit Poro abuse on the Holding Abyss? Why does the Fountain Laser shoot Poros? This was just a fun feature the team decided to add. No sinister agenda here. Way back in the day, there was a plan to fry them crispy black style like a cartoon. But that didn't end up happening. Fountain lasers can't melt or even harm fluff balls of love. And the last post I want to cover today is Battlecast Ilawi. Concepting. It seems like the team made some progress with her concepts. First of all, I want to mention that Riot is really listening to your feedback. Immediately after the first concepts hit, people complained that Ilawi has a cleavage window for no reason. Riot agreed and they answered the complaints with two solutions. Either they can minimalize the window, or they can give her armor. If it was up to me, I would stay with the armor. Riot also went deeper into what the Battlecast universe is all about. Apparently it is similar to the project or program sci-fi worlds. But Battlecast isn't as clean, and it is more rough. Additionally, Ilawi is a special one in this world because she is not a machine. She is an organic rebelling against the machine. We even got some backstory. Creator Victor's machine destroy and hunt humans in their war-torn world, but his plan quickly runs into a problem. Victor attempts to assimilate Ilawi, but she proves too strong. Ilawi breaks free from her bonds, and armed with only her new robotic arm, she tears the head from a giant mechanized guard and carries it with her. She quickly learns that the components implanted in her allow her to interface with Victor's machines and central computer system. Hacking into it, she is able to escape to relative safety, where she starts planning her resistance. That's where the idea comes from. We then got some sketches for her tentacles. It all came down to three variations. Full Battlecast version, Energy version and Battlecast with exposed cables. And since the exposed cables fit the whole idea of rough machinery, that's what the tentacles are based on. Then came in the final concepts. Here you can see that the cables are the main theme. The reason why it is more energy-like is because the tentacles have to be transparent. Just like Ilawi's tentacles in any other skin. It would look weird on fully physical cables. And finally, Riot is now working on the totem. The hat Ilawi is carrying. That is something we will probably see next time. And that is all I could cover in one day. We still have some more news, but we will have a look at those in the future. For now, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this, feel free to rate it and subscribe for more news and lore. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Discord if you'd like to chat. Of course, special thanks to our Patreons for going the extra mile. And with that, thank you all so much for watching and for your support. You know I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you come again.